sky. Stories to give. The ones who make it there ain't can make it back. Salutations and shit, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to your favorite travel podcast, Travel and Shit, where I, your host, D. Carrie, have an experiential conversation about the nuanced ways that travel intersects with regular life. And um, you're hearing from a freshly 37 year old. And I just wanted to remind you guys that my birthday just passed. And um, I love birthdays. It was perfect. Shout out to my mom for making it extra awesome. Shout out to my partner for making it extra awesome. I really appreciate you guys. I only ask for the simple things and you guys always deliver. Um, And shout out to my little brother for being home this weekend. Um, Really glad that he's up here to spend some time with us. Uh, So if you would like to uh, give the kid a birthday gift, sign up for the mailing list or um what was the other thing i said oh you can review the podcast on whatever platform you listen itunes give it five stars or um spotify or iHeartRadio. show the show some love show me some love leave a review um you know i'd really appreciate that because it absolutely helps me when i am approaching uh sponsors that's the word i was looking for when when i am approaching sponsors about sponsoring the show so that i can stop spending my money on making this happen um speaking of spending money bye to the to the last one that just was a slow slow horrific death if you're watching on the youtubes you can see i've got new life i've got new life a new year new plants i'm thinking of making that a birthday thing every year. Here's a little uh, quick fact about me. Every year for my birthday, I watch The Wiz. I've been doing that for about seven years now. My cousin Dom, hey baby, uh, we started that new tradition on my 30th birthday. So it is something that I do now every year and I look forward to it. Um, I think I'm gonna start buying plants. I bought these the day before my birthday. They got here today. So I ordered them on the 6th and they were here by the tent and they come from Rhode Island, healthy, happy plants. Um, from one of my personal favorite, uh, about to call them a jungle, um, nurseries to order from, which happens to be called Jordan's jungle. Um, so I've got a discount code. If you would like 15% off, feel free to scroll down to the description box, wherever you get the information and the links that I mentioned. Um, if you don't find it on your platform for whatever reason that you're listening to, you can always go to travel and and go to the episodes page where I have the most recent episodes or well, all the episodes really. And, um, a, like it's, it's, a, it's kind of like a blog post. So I have all the the links and the description of the episode, all that is on the the website also, if for whatever reason you can't find it on whatever platform that you are listening on. So I mentioned going to the, um, what is the thing called? Why am I so forgetful right now? Um, it's been a long day and this heat y'all, I feel like it's hot everywhere in the world. If you are in the season of summer, it is, uh, freaking shit show it has been so hot this it's been hot this summer in general but like it's hot i'm hot so if you hear a little buzzing actually no boyfriend does a great job editing that out i really don't think you guys hear the fan in the back at all um but as i was saying also on the website where you can find the 15 percent off from jungle jordan's jungle they, they look so bright and vibrant i'm so pleased i like my plants um, you can also sign up for the mailing list because drum roll in 11 days, I'll be having my first live show. So I'm quite excited for that because I will be having some past guests and actually future guests on the show. I have Shira from Black Girl World Traveler. I've got Wanda from Black Women Travel Podcast, and I've got Nay of Taji Magazine, which I am the travel contributing writer for. Um, the three beautiful women are all entrepreneurs and Wanda and Shira are actually um, mobile. They are 
either out of the country or all over the country. And I absolutely wanted these three voices in particular to have a discussion with me based on James Baldwin's essay, The Discovery of What It Means to Be an American. In the essay, Baldwin discussed leaving the United States to, I guess you can say, dive into who he believed he was, dive into his personhood outside of being a black man. He wanted to see what it was like to be a writer and not a black writer. Um, And that got my wheels to turning. And I absolutely wanted to have a discussion about where blackness falls on our hierarchy of self. If I were to move out of the United States in an attempt to avoid the racism that I experience here, and all the microaggressions and the macroaggressions and all the aggressions in general, if I were to leave this country to go somewhere else, would I be able to adapt to that country's climate or would I still bring in my mindset? Would I necessarily be able to um, distinguish or how easily or difficult would it be for me to distinguish who D Carey is, who D is outside of being a black podcaster or a black woman or a, you know, black content creator? What does it feel like to just be me? Who do I and how do I exp- experience myself outside of that identifier? Um So that's the gist of the conversation, but it's not just the four of us having this conversation. It's a live episode. So I absolutely want to hear from the guests. So if you are interested in having your voice heard and being part of the Travel and Shit episode, please sign up RSVP so that I can send you the link for the event. It is a free virtual event. So you can attend from wherever in the world you will have access to Zoom. And it is going to be not this Sunday, but next Sunday, August 21st at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And I am looking forward to hearing everyone's opinions. So those are the announcements, the updates. Also, um, I figured probably not, you know, needed to be a spoiler or a surprise or anything, but definitely going to have giveaways and surprises um there will be i guess you know what for those of you that do subscribe to the email list and for those of you that are already signed up for the event i'll send y'all the update y'all will find out what the giveaways are because i have a couple of options so i'm I'm gonna tinker away and see what uh what the girls want see what you guys want but Got the announcements out the way. This is the 200th episode. This is episode 200. There have been 200 episodes of Travel and Shit. I have created 200 podcast episodes. I have had some of the most incredible guests. I have had, yes, they are gifts. Gifts are my guests. My guests are my gifts. I have had some really really thought provoking and impactful conversations. And I'm grateful to all of you guys who have participated and to all of you guys who have listened to the podcast this far. It is still a project of love that I enjoy doing. And I, you know, it just feels good to have been that consistent for this long. October will be four years, four years, four years. And that feels really good, y'all. This shit feels good. So I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of y'all that have been rocking with me for any amount of time. And I hope that I can continue to make you guys proud. So for episode 200, I wanted to hear from you guys a little bit. So I'm doing an Ask Me Anything. I posted to my stories at uh, Travel and Shit, T-R-A-V-E-L-N-S-H underscore T and on um, my IG underscore D-C-A-R-R-I-E, D-Carry. And um, I asked y'all to ask me anything. 
And I got some really good ones. I got some really good ones. So I will be answering uh, my favorite questions. And I didn't really plan the answers, really. Like, I I looked, I, I see what y'all are asking. And um, I didn't want it to be, like, staged. I like just doing things off the spirit. So the spirit is guiding me here. Um, I'm a little sentimental. I'm just in my, my little, I'm in my bag. I'm in my bag. I have some, one, some really, really great listeners. Y'all are awesome. There's some great questions. Um, but it just feels good to have this interaction with you guys. So thank you for all of you guys who answered. And, um, I hope that I can continue to entertain and, um, give you guys a product that we can both be proud of. So without further ado, first question, who was your favorite guest? Um, that's a really difficult one. I will probably say, well, I obviously, well, I won't say what my favorite guest, who my favorite guest was. I I don't have a favorite guest because everybody's got their favorite moment. And I don't, it's kind of like asking, I don't want to say like asking a parent for a favorite kid, but like if you have pets, which one is your favorite? Or I, I just don't do well with, definitive right so I guess you can say who may the ones that may have left the biggest impact that would probably be more of a fair assessment and the first name that comes to mind is Inca Cresswell I will say that Her episode was so interesting to me. And that was an episode that like, it was a blind pitch. I'd never met Inca. We don't have any like, you know, degrees of separation that I'm aware of. Somehow I came across her, um, her documentary, My 25. And we were just like, yo, this is pretty dope. Like we just ended up watching it one day and I'll never forget. We were sitting in the bed and for some reason I'm like, yo, this is shot really well. Check this out. And so then we kept going and it was just really fucking good. It was great content. And I absolutely knew at that point that I wanted to, uh, have her as a guest and yeah, Inca is one of my favorite guests. I will also say that I've really enjoyed, um, having some of my friends pull up and do guests. Lola is um, a friend that's done a couple of episodes. I always love talking to Lola. Um, hey, Lo. Let's say Nate, Camila, Miss Hair and Humor, Anissa, Marissa, Denise, like, having homegirls that share, you know, certain things in common, certain interests. And even when our interests are not necessarily aligned on the same shelf, they can be on the same bookcase, right? Like I don't do hair. I don't have hair. Cam does, but that fine line between how much effort women put into their hair, especially, excuse me, not women, how much effort black women put into vacation hair, right? Um, how, I don't know about y'all, but when I travel, when I go places, one of the things that I look forward to the most is what the salt air, the salt water, and the sun are going to do for my skin. So having the conversation with Anissa about skin 
was alignment. Um, having known Tay from working together on different, you know, projects at, I won't say the infancy, cause we had both been doing other things prior to meeting each other, but early in our uh, development as performers, creators, and, um, you know, just, I guess you could say professionals, although I don't really consider myself a professional, but Tay is absolutely a professional. So I guess more along our, um, our journey as creators, right? As artists, if you will being able to see that growth and have that conversation with her was super bomb. Um, so I would say Inca was probably one of the episodes that I remember being very surprised by a lot of the information and a lot of the content because she's from the UK. So there were things that like, for example, their educational system, the way high school and college is set up for them is way different than the way it's handled here in the States. And that was so new to me. So that was, that was interesting to say the least. So I would go with dang though, but I'm trying to, let's just go with that. Cause I could sit and dilly dally on a bunch of different episodes. I know that I had a really, really great convo with, um, Danielle Hodge. Um, we actually got super cool after our uh, recording. So shout out to Danielle. Um, I appreciate. And then also there's some guests that I had on the show and then we have sustained like a friendship afterwards. Danielle is one. Shira was an, um, was a guest maybe episode 17. It was one of the first 20 episodes, I believe. Um, I had Shira talking about backpacking. Um, so for four, I've, you know what I mean? I met her four years ago through Wanda. I met Wanda about four years ago. And that's another thing. This podcast has really introduced me to some incredible, incredible black women in particular, but people across the board, but black women in particular, um, I've met and had some really great experiences uh, from having this body of work. Uh, let's see. I would say probably Wanda's episode also because she is such a dynamic person to talk with. So like Wanda can ask them questions and not, and when Wanda asks the questions, it's from a very genuine place and you can sense that you can feel that definitely pull up for that. I'm telling y'all you want to be there for the live episode. It's just one of those things where it is a gift of hers. She has many gifts, but that is one of Wanda's gifts. So having her as a guest, and I was also a guest on her show conversation with Wanda community with Wanda is a blessing, such a joy, such a treat. And, um, that definitely transpired in the episode as well. So I've had some really, really incredible guests. I had, um, Akua, no, Akua. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right from Connected to Culture, Mad Bomb. Same with Keem, Mad Bomb. Like so many of the people that Marty, Mad Bomb, like there's so many women that I, you know, have been following on Instagram or, you know, don't know personally and then get a chance to speak with them and interact with them. And I'm like, thank God you're not like a jerk. You're really nice. I enjoy talking with you outside of just having this conversation on the show. So yeah, I can't say I have a favorite 
guest. Um, but I've had some really good ones and I've, you know, made some really good friends along the way. So there's, there's a lot of love in the guest pool. There's a lot of love there. Let's see. I like this one. Where have you experienced the best sunset? I think that one is, I don't want to say it's an easy one, but I know where sunset felt the best, if that makes sense. And I would say that was in Burlington, Vermont. That was when uh, my partner and I, that was, and that was also our first trip together. Mm. Boyfriend took me to Vermont and that was an incredible trip. We had so much fucking fun. And we drove up from Johnson up to Burlington. We ended up extending the trip and stayed the night. And we had, again, mad fun. And we're easy. Like, it, we really enjoy each other's company. We don't have to really go anywhere to have fun. And I want to say it was the first... I don't know if it was the first night or the second night. But we ended up... I think it was after my tattoo. So this was probably the first night. And then we ended up going back a second night. I don't remember y'all. It was like two years ago. Anywho, the details ain't matter. This is about the sunset. So we ended up walking to get food and we pulled, like we turned the corner and then we've got this incredible view across like, I guess, what do you call them? Wharfs, docks or whatever. But where the boats pull up. And it's not like a, a large uh, commercial. Well, it might be a commercial, but it's not like a large cruise kind of system or anything crazy like that. It's just, you know, smaller boats and they look like they might all be privately owned or whatever. And then there's like a seafood restaurant or whatever. Don't remember the name of it. Something shore, shanty, crab shanty. I don't know. But when I tell y'all the colors were so beautiful and we actually enjoy sunset together anywhere we will we've got a really good view from our apartment here where we will randomly like and it's generally boyfriend he loves a good sunset he will peep the colors or peep something and just call my attention to it and we'll just stand there and like hold each other and watch the sunset simple pleasures i'm a very easy person and that sunset in vermont was Probably our first sunset together. Maybe that's why it's my favorite. I think that's a pretty simple answer. I won't really expound because I think that that's a really cute and quaint answer. So yeah, Hartford, not Hartford, excuse me. Hartford was our, probably might've been, damn. So do I like Hartford or Vermont more? It's good. That's a good question. I don't know. But Vermont was my favorite sunset. Vermont was the favorite. Okay. How do you feel about being almost in our forties? Thank you, Terry. Um, I am excited contrary to the way I felt about turning 30. So turning 30 was, first of all, I had a shit fit turning 25. My quarter life crises was quite the crises. I, in fairness to myself, I didn't know what to expect, right? I'd just been a kid for the majority of my life. So the idea of really kind of nudging and burrowing your way into adulthood is scary. So in hindsight, and I mean, not like 20 years hindsight, but we're quite a bit of ways. We're 12 years away from 25, but you know, I don't beat myself up for being so terrified of 25. When I was turning 30, it was a little more easeful. It wasn't that bad because I have cousins, all the, no, the majority of my girl cousins are 
older than me. Well, at least on my dad's side, the, the on my dad's side, most of my cousins, damn, no. I have a good handful of cousins on my dad's side that are older than me. We all go in twos. Me, then Brandy, then Teresa. I mean, no, me, Brandy, Maya, then Teresa. We all go in twos. Then I got Cam, and I got Shantae. Hey, Tay. I got David, not a girl cousin. And we're all two years apart. Me, Camila, Shantae, and David. Well, they're all the same age, but the three of them are two years older than me. So between that trio and then the three cousins that sequence up, I had a really great view of what 30 and what life in your thir- early 30s would look like. So by then, I wasn't as nervous. You are excited about 30, but I think it's more of a, ooh, will I really have everything together? And mind you, 30 was the same year that I left the country for the first time. So my 30s have been the best time of my life. I have experienced so many of the best experiences of my life in my 30s. And can't say I'd want to do it any other way. I've had a good fucking time and I, knowing what I know now about how enjoyable my thirties were, I am looking forward to having a family and maybe purchasing property at some, uh, honestly, that's not exactly something that I'm looking forward to. I don't really want to do that. Um, but if you tell me I could buy land and build a house that I'm excited for. That ultimately is what my partner and I want to do. But the whole idea of trying to find a house or like find a condo someplace that doesn't appeal to me. Really? I desperately want to leave New York. I fucking hate it here. Um, never thought I'd be that girl. Never thought I would be the girl that is over New York. Alas, here a nigga is ready to go. Um, but I am very comfortably anticipating my 40s. My 40s don't scare me. Um, They're not as daunting appearing as it was to me in my 20s. 27-year-old me thinking about 42-year-old me had no point of reference. I didn't. It just really didn't register for me as, you know, anything that I could really, I I didn't really have anything to go with. My parents are 30 years older than me. So it's, it's kind of like, I don't even really have the presence of mind, the space of mind. Well, at that time, I didn't have that presence or space of mind to like, with some foresight, look into my parents' lives as any kind of indication or predictor or, you know, framework for what that um, stage in life looked like. Now, at this bigly age of my, you know, late 30s, I can now kind of spend more time looking at, my back is, oh, if y'all watch on the Instagram, not on the Instagram, on um, YouTube, pardon my back was itching. But as a 37 year old, I can look at my parents in their sixties and kind of see, okay, this works. I like the way this transition for them. I get it. All right. I can see this. Okay. Nope. Don't want to do this. Damn. What do you have to do to get insurance? Really? Fuck. Okay. So it's like, now that I have the presence of mind to kind of look towards other people to get a feel for not what my life is going to look like, but what someone who for the most part has similar views, someone who has, you know, similar, um, 
I feel like we share so many things that are in common while also having so many things are different. I am on the one hand confident that my life will look nothing like theirs does. And that goes for my parents, my cousins, anybody that I may look to, but at the same time, giving me enough similarity in that I can say I'm going to be okay. And that I think also has a lot to do with more understanding of self and more just, I don't want to say getting, you know, set in your ways, but it's kind of like when you find like a certain travel style that works for you, right? When you find something that works, like I'm a window seat girl. Have I sat in the aisle? Yeah, not my bag. If I fall asleep, I don't want that that cart bumping my elbows. If I fall asleep and my foot is hanging, like my toes are hanging into the aisle, not even my foot. I don't want somebody stepping on me. I don't want that cart hitting me. So yeah, I'm not really an aisle girl. Give me a window. Those are things I know from experience. And now that I've had more experience in life in general, I know that there are certain things about me that I am very comfortable not uh, not mitigating, not negotiating for other people. Um, one thing about me is if it don't got nothing to do with my money or my safety, I'm going to tell you how I really feel. Um, and it's not even in a condescending or tough love because I don't think love has to be hurtful to be impactful um, in the sense where, I mean, excuse me, not love. I don't think honesty has to be hurtful to be impactful. I think that you can speak your truth very candidly and for people that, you know, as long as you are respectful, because it's, it's unfair to expect someone to kind of hear you out or receive how you may feel about something if you're being, if you're going out of your way or being extra in a space to kind of um, be disrespectful, right? But if you are being an authentic version of self and speaking your mind to someone and they can't respect that, at the very least, they don't have to agree. They don't have to follow up. There doesn't have to be a lot of discourse, but you know, then that's, that's more of a them thing and not a me thing. And I'm very comfortable in that. I'm also very comfortable in being more aware of not everything is about me. And I think that that makes for less frustration and shorter bouts of frustration when it does set in because it's nothing like somebody's actions pissing you off or taking you out of like whatever space of comfort or peace or joy or just like indecisive not indecisive uh, indifference somebody taking you out of that it is what it is right but how long do you sit in that anger or frustration i find that while i may hold on to some things longer there are so many other things that I am so much more ready to let go of or dismiss because I'm able to see this has nothing to do with me and this is all of that person problem and, you know, my best to y'all. Uh, but I don't have to carry the weight of their, um, their burden. I got my own. So that's another thing that has helped. And I don't want to say that, I'm trying to, you know, because travel has been a very impactful part of my life, but I can't necessarily, I, I do not think that the more I think about it, the more I dwell on it and play with the idea. I don't think that I'm necessarily a better person because of travel, but I think that I'm a better version of myself because of travel. And I think that being able to have so many different experiences throughout my thirties has given me 
the kind of, I guess the seasoning on the meat. Like, this is why the meat tastes this way. Because of the flavors, because of the spices, because of the shit you add to it, right? That's my experiences through my travels, my experiences through the new lens that I can view my life at home because of my travels has allowed me to come to these realizations that I have, you know, just listed as being part of why I'm not, ex- um, not excited, um, apprehensive or anxious about being 40. So I know that travel has absolutely helped in me being comfortable with who I am and being comfortable with knowing that while I may not always believe it, I can make good decisions and I do make, you know, choices that benefit me in life. So yeah, I am very comfortably awaiting 40. God willing, I make it. (laughs) Um, and God willing, my friends and family make it with me. I am looking forward to 40, sorry. So I hope you are as well. And not just like 40, like 43, 46, 42, 49. Like my forties don't scare me the way my thirties did because I had such a good time in my thirties. And also because I have some really bomb women that I could look and be like, oh, oh, so you still fine, fine. Like not just cute, like you fine, fine. I'll be good. 40 won't be a problem. What was next? Um, hmm. Ask my parents why I am so hot, Tanya. Hey, babe. Um, Joe, I'm going to ignore your first question um, because you already know the answer to that one. And I, I enjoyed these two questions. So which trip has changed your view of the world the most? That's a really good one, but a really hard one to answer. Um, let me look at this country list. This is the one that I think I um, tried to look at and see like, dang, I want to spend 10 minutes thinking when I start recording. But I think that the trip that changed my view of the world the most might have been Italy. It might have been Italy. And I think what it was about Italy was that, and by Italy, I only experienced Rome. Rome was the only city in Italy that I have been to. So this isn't necessarily an extensive two week journey through the vineyards and rivers. It was wrong. (laughs) Um, But I think that the Rome trip Rome might've been what changed my view of the world. And specifically because so many of the things that I grew up being told were such poignant and impactful and larger than life, um, points of reference, um, landmarks, uh, buildings of distinction, if you will, the Parthenon, the Colosseum. Um, I got there and was very underwhelmed, very underwhelmed. And it was one of those things where while I'd heard about most of the places that I visited in, well, not most of them, a lot of places I kind of just Googled top tourist places in Rome and was just like, all right, that's close enough. I'll walk there. Right. On the one hand, the trip showed me that some of the things that I expected to be grandiose were actually only grandiose because of the way the story was told. And for me, there's nothing really wrong with that, but it was one of those things where what's the quote to the Victor runs the spoils or 
something about like the winner tells the story, that whole thing, right? And pausing it because fuck mosquitoes, man. I am trying to concentrate and this mosquito bite on my left leg is the absolute most I had like six mosquito bites from this weekend and this is the only one that itches. It this is driving me crazy. Unpause. So to the victor, the the winner is the one that writes history, right? And I feel like so much emphasis and so much time was placed on like European history. And while I think the history of other countries is important, I don't think that it really played out well for my high school experience, if that makes sense. I feel like I could have spent so much more time learning so many other things about the country that I live in and been taught more about other countries in relation to my own country, right? So while points of interest and points of historical importance are, they carry their weight, they have their importance, I think that the educational system just does a very shit job. And I don't know if that is the system or if that is individual teachers not really doing, you know, impactful lesson plans or if it's that they are kept from having certain conversations or discourse. Mind you, I went to an all girls Catholic high school. So I don't know if that had anything to do with the information that they were giving us. But, you know, you let school tell you what's important and then you get to experience it or see it for yourself. And you're like, this was whack. You know what I mean? Like, so... I think that that Rome trip really kind of reminded me in a very tangible way that it's about who's telling the story. It's about your source. Where do you get your information from? And to not let that necessarily, two parts here, not to let that deter me from still experiencing them or still being interested and curious enough to visit or investigate more, but at the same time, a reminder to also do my own research. So I promise that I may have enjoyed visiting visiting the Colosseum or the Parthenon more. And I can't remember which one it was, but I think one of them was considered like a portal or a doorway to hell. Had I looked up that, or had I looked up stories about these locations, about these buildings, these destinations, these historical sites, had I looked them up as an adult and not just went with whatever I happened to hold on to from my early teens and from my high school career, I may have been able to get a better experience out of the time and the energy that I had out there. So on another sense, it's a reminder to figure things out for where you are in your current space. Do a little digging, do a little research and you're more likely to find what about a person, place, or a thing resonates with you and in turn be able to make it more impactful. And that applies to anywhere in the world. And it absolutely applies to so many situations in life in general. So I am going to tie uh tie the bag right there i am actually going to answer a few more of the questions but in a part two so i am going to basically batch record (laughs) and do episode 200 this week and then i am going to have another episode recorded for you guys but i'm going to take a strategic break so that I can continue to finish planning for the Baldwin episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first half and don't forget travelandshippodcast.com slash events so that you can sign up for the Baldwin conversation that we'll be having with my special guests, Wanda, Shira, and Nay, and you because 
you guys are just as important. Like I, I don't have, I had an incredible episode. Actually, that probably should have been part of the first answer I gave in terms of favorite guests. But again, not favorite guests, but favorite conversations or very impactful conversations. I had a really bomb time talking to um, two of my listeners. I had Brittany and Tiffany show their beautiful faces on um, an episode where we talked about uh, fantasy travel. That one was so fucking fun. So this will be the second time I've actually had listeners participate. So I'm really excited to have that happen again. And um, if you're actually interested in being a guest on the show, shoot me a message because I truly feel that anybody can have a conversation about travel because nuance travel is related to so many different things. And I would love to have you guys participate more in the show. So if you're curious, if you're interested, shoot me an email, dcarry at travelshippodcast.com. But make sure you sign up for the live event so that you can actually have your voice heard in the first live travel and shit recorded episode. So that's it for my 200th episode. Mm, it's so exciting for me. It's so exciting. So it'll be basically next week, it'll basically be t- episode 200. It's going to be 201, but It'll be a part two. And I'm going to answer a few more of the ask me anything questions that you guys um, sent my way. Thank you again for those. And um, yeah, I'll see y'all next week.